I am the LA-based street artist known as Wordsmith. I am known for painting and pasting inspir inspirational messages onto walls all over the world. I am a positive person, and this results in messages such as, never be afraid to reinvent yourself, dream bigger, I believe in you, so that makes two of us. If you fear failure, you're already considering it an option and aspire to inspire others, and the universe will take note. I am a writer. I have always been a writer. And I love writing in many different mediums. I used to work in advertising as a copywriter. I've written screenplays, short films, stories, articles, I've worked in documentary TV, and I'm a published author. The secret to me is, I just love to write. This love of words eventually led to street art. However, it's the journey I want to talk about today. A few years ago, I realized something about myself and about the people that I am closest to in life. You think the common bond would be art or even creativity. However, it's not. The people I gravitate toward most in life all have reinvented themselves, and most have done it multiple times. They, like me, have dove into pools of unknown and ignored all their fear. They, like me, have, have discovered that change is good. It's healthy. And I am the poster child for this because I have reinvented myself countless times. And it all started when I decided to leave my job in the corporate world. I will never forget the moment that I decided to quit my job in advertising and chase my dreams full time. I was sitting in a conference room waiting for a meeting to start. The topic of the meeting, how to have more efficient meetings. No lie. And the two people who called the meeting, my two bosses who were going to run the meeting, were 15 minutes late. Sitting there, basking in the irony, I realized something. It's not too late. I realized it's not too late to chase my dreams. I always say that when you're older and you're sitting on your porch, watching the sunset, drinking lemonade, you're not going to think, I shouldn't have chased my dreams when I was younger. In fact, it might be the opposite. You might say, I should have chased them harder. I should have chased them longer. I should have chased them, period. I also always say, what are you waiting for? Because after all, we only live twice. I told you, I'm a very optimistic person. I decided to dream bigger. I turned in my notice and I told my family and my friends, that I was moving to Los Angeles to write. I think LA is the creative capital of the world. And it had been calling me for a long while. However, I was finally ready to listen. And let me clarify something. I was not moving to Los Angeles to be a writer. People always say that. They say, I want to be an actor. They say, I want to be a musician. I tell them, you are an actor. You are a musician, a dancer, a singer, a comedian, a director. I am a writer. I was moving to Los Angeles to write and to chase my dreams. And I wanted to write in various mediums, movie and TV scripts, stories, articles, documentary TV. And while my family was worried and all my friends told me I was insane, I knew I made the right choice. From the moment I decided to quit my job, leave Chicago, and head west, I knew I made the right decision. Because even when I was struggling, I was happy. And that's all that mattered. I have always believed in myself. I have always believed in my writing. So the fact that I was happy and I was now striving on a daily basis to get my writing out there, it re it re it, I'm sorry, it energized me. It reinvigorated me. And that's the secret. You have to enjoy the journey. 
You have to enjoy the daily, weekly, monthly action of your craft. Chasing your dreams can be hard. LA can be hard. However, if you enjoy the journey, that's the secret to everything. I have friends who are frustrated by the daily routine, the roller coaster ride that is chasing your dreams, the ups and the downs. I have actor friends that are frustrated when they audition for something and do not end up getting the part. I tell them, but you're getting into the room. You get to act every single time you audition. And that is, and that does, while that doesn't pay the bills, that is so much farther than so many people have gotten, so much farther than all those people that sit there and say, I want to be an actor someday. The film director, Steven Soderbergh, said something once that I can and will never forget. He said, talent plus perseverance equals luck. Talent plus perseverance equals luck. That is Hollywood math. And that is what I did when I plopped down on the West Coast. I wrote every day in many different mediums. And I kept putting my work out there, knowing that luck would come to me in the form of success. A couple of years ago, I had an idea for a story that I did not want to write as a screenplay. So I decided to write it as a novel. I had never written a book, but I did not let that stop me. I was excited about this idea, and I had just gone on hiatus for a documentary TV show that I was working on, and I dove in. I wrote every day, all day. I'm talking six to eight to 10 hours a day. And those were some really fun days. Again, I just love to write. And because I was writing at this pace, after about three months, I had a first draft of a manuscript that I was not ashamed of. In fact, I was kind of excited. But I didn't know what I had until I gave it to some trusted friends. And by trusted, I mean those that would not just tell me what I wanted to hear. It was friends that would tell me the truth. And all of them came back with a thumbs up. This is when I put my head down again. And with another trusted friend, I worked to edit and polish the manuscript. After about three months, I had something I was proud of, something that I wanted to get into the right hands. That's when I started the query process, which was an incredible roller coaster ride. On a daily basis, I would send out letters and emails to lit agents and to publishers asking them to read my book. I got a lot of no's. I didn't hear from the majority of the people I sent letters to, and I got a couple of yeses, but I kept trying. Two months into the query process, I got an email on Friday morning from a publisher that said they wanted to read my book. On Monday morning, I got another email from them that said they wanted to purchase and publish the book. Talent plus perseverance equals luck. Now this is where my story takes an interesting turn. After working on that book, after writing for six to eight to 10 hours a day, I realized something. I realized I needed an active hobby. I needed, that, I needed something that took me out of the chair, away from the computer, for stretches of time. I was happy, but I felt my health was suffering. But this was a conundrum. It was a conundrum because I know myself. I could have taken up photography. I love photography. However, a couple months in, I know I would have come to resent it because it was taking me away from my first love, writing. Conundrum, what to do, what to do. Enter street art. I have always loved street art. I have always been inspired by it. Even as a child, I used to see scrawlings on the wall, things like Tony Hawk is God, and I used to think, who did that? Why did they do that? When did they do that? 
However, here's the rub. I did not think I could do it. I thought superheroes did it. These pieces appear overnight on the sides of buildings and on rooftops, and it's just awe-inspiring. Conundrum. Needed an active hobby, always loved street art, was not a superhero. As I pondered what to do, creativity reared its beautiful head in the form of an idea. I thought, okay, if I did do street art, I know it would be word-based. And at first I thought I'd do like little stickers. Um, and, and when I said it would, was word-based, I immediately saw the image of a typewriter. And I thought the words would be floating above it. But then I thought, wait, the typewriter could be painted and the words could be pasted onto a page above, of it, above it. This idea combined the two most popular methods of doing street art, spray painting via a stencil and weed pasting a poster onto a wall. And it combined them into an idea that was simple yet compelling, one that I fell in love with. But I had to Google if anybody had done it before. The moment I found out that no one had, I knew I needed to make it a reality. I spent the better part of a week researching stencils, learning how to weed paste, and writing some words. And I had intent. I aimed to say things to people in Los Angeles that I wish they would have said to me when I first arrived. Dream bigger. I believe in you, so that makes two of us. If you fear failure, you're already considering it an option. So one night, I packed a backpack with everything that I needed, and I ventured out a couple blocks from my home, and I painted and pasted five pieces. And I loved it. The action of doing that was just unforgettable. So much so that it was, it was, it was conundrum solved. I was energized. I was reinvigorated. Dare I say I found my calling. I look fondly back at that first night, and it was is, as if I was bit by a radioactive can of spray paint. I didn't know I had it in me, but I did it. Six years later, after starting to do street art, I am often asked to give advice to people starting out. These might be artists, they might be writers, they might be actors, but the advice I give is always the same. Do it for yourself, do what makes you happy, do what you love, and then hope what you do resonates with others. This was my path. In a medium that had no path, I found one by doing what made me happy. I used to work in advertising, and I reinvented myself as a street artist who boils down thoughts and phrases into the fewest yet most compelling words possible. I'm a writer who likes to work in various mediums. And street art is just another medium, albeit a pretty kick-ass one. I am a positive person, and that results in me spreading messages of affirmation and motivation. I started small with pieces about this big, but I started. I dove into a pool of unknown, and I reinvented myself. I dared to dream bigger, by believing in myself and finally acting like the superhero I didn't know I was. I did it for myself. I did what made me happy. I was doing what I loved. After a couple months, I noticed that the words were resonating with people, and not just people in Los Angeles. It was with people all across the country and all across the world. And this makes sense, because no matter who you are, no matter where you are located, and no matter where you are in life, we all have a dream. The words were resonating, and this snowball effect happened for me because of this incredible butterfly effect that was happening with my work. People shared my work on social media. They tagged their family and their friends and their loved ones. They sought out my pieces and posed in front of them and took incredible pictures. It's been absolutely incredible. Six years later, I not only do this full time, 
but I get to travel the world and spread my messages far and wide. And I'll be honest, not a day goes by that I don't think, thank God my two bosses were 15 minutes late. A couple months after I started doing street art, I aimed to write something about what Wordsmith was to me. And dare I say I nailed it, because what I wrote has become a mantra for so many. I wrote, aspire to inspire others, and the universe will take note. Aspire to inspire others, and the universe will take note. Those are the words I want to leave you with. I hope they resonate. Thank you.